Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. In this video today, I wanted to go over one of the more kind of interesting and controversial stories we've had throughout the entire LCS uh, season, and that is revolving around Champions Q. There's been a lot of good news to come out of it. Um, I mean, there have been pro players that have said, hey, it's really great. It's really fun, and it's good practice. Some people have gone as far as to say it's better than EU solo queue. Some people have gone as far as to say it's better than Korean solo queue. Um, you know, the amateur scene, those players have a potential to win uh, money that could really be life-changing for them or, or help prolong or extend their careers. Um, there, there's just overall a lot of great things. It's low ping. Um, it's only playing against, you know, pro or, or pro aspiring players, you know, no one tricks, all of that stuff. Um, but there's also been a downside of this whole thing as well. There's some players who aren't playing it at all. There's some teams who aren't playing it at all. There's witch hunts. There's people getting flamed for, for not playing it or, uh, you know, X, Y, Z, all of this. And it's really just gone back and forth. And it's been this entire big shit storm that has really culminated to where we're at today, uh, where we're going to be going over all the latest in this video. So definitely drop a like if you do enjoy it. I would appreciate that so, so much. Uh, and of course, subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content. With that being said, let's get right into this. So, there's been a lot of stuff talked about around Champions Q. Like I said, you know, TSM is a team who didn't play a lot of Champions Q this year. And we've heard some reasons from some of the different players. You know, Tactical has said, uh, hey, sometimes I just want to chill out and listen to music and, and play solo queue and grind when I'm at home uh, by myself. I don't want to, you know, have to throw on the comms, have to super sweaty, try hard uh, and play with four other people and be competing for prize money and all this other stuff. Sometimes that's just not what I'm looking to do. So, hey, you know, TSM as a team, they didn't play a lot of solo queue for a bunch of different reasons. Kaiduo was grinding solo queue. Um, I don't know. It was just all weird. It was weird. Um, and then you had C9, who also wasn't playing a lot of Champions queue, but they weren't as sucky as TSM was. And, uh, you know, C9 also had the in-house scrims and all that other stuff, and maybe they had some more excuses. Uh, yeah, and again, Fudge, um, you know, he came out and said, hey, I like to be a little bit more inty during solo queue, and I don't want to just, like, int people's Champions queue games where they're trying to get really high-level practice and they're trying to compete for prize money and all that stuff. Uh, and, you know, some of that made sense. We also had this. Which got a lot of people talking. This is from Lord Danny, Danny LOL on Twitter, obviously the evil genius is AD Carey, and he wrote some things about Champions Q um, where he had some main points here. He said, for one, he's really not the biggest grinder of solo queue. Uh, his motivation for League has not been good and is still not that good um, for both solo queue or Champions Q. That's not a great excuse. Uh, he says, you know, they do a lot of stuff like VODs, Champions Q, solo queue, 1v1s, 2v2, screaming with this team. Uh, and he's just, yeah, not had the best uh, motivation, I guess. Uh, he says, you know, he does watch VODs and he plays solo queue with his friends so they can duo queue and practice together. I believe that's only below Master. So if he's doing that, you know, it's in like Diamond, Elo, uh, or lower i do believe um and then he ended up not using champions q for two points first he disliked using comms with other players that are not his friends or teammates um which most people can understand and can maybe emphasize empathize with a little bit but most people do not accept that as a good enough excuse to not play champions q if everyone is saying um you know it's better in the u.s solo queue it's better in korean solo queue it's the best practice environment it's uh you know low ping whatever um you know being a little bit uncomfortable on comms it, it's just not a great excuse it, it's just a bad excuse uh and it is an excuse um and then uh so even though it is a huge advantage use comms i wouldn't like doing it i'd like to play the game uh think also i'd like to play the game thinking mostly to myself is that's how i perform decently well most of the time maybe i won't have uh, to say much in comms or just don't talk and listen to them but i feel like uh that's not great from a teammate's perspective so you know he's saying he, a lot of it is just uh the comms aspect of, of the whole thing he talks about this a little bit he says secondly solo queue is a more solo environment he enjoys playing 80 carries that he wants to practice um rather than you know just kind of spam try harding jinx and Aphelios to get lp in champions queue uh and two things there and this is something that double lift actually touches on really really interesting you know double if post a response video to this he says he agrees on one point and the rest no the one thing he did agree with is that playing duo um you know with a duo and solo queue can be really really good you know playing with a support and actually getting getting to practice specific matchups and pairings and stuff that's not something you can do in champions queue it's not something you can do in high elo solo queue but if you do smurf a little bit in duo queue you can practice some of those things but Double lift, uh, you know, does uh, respond to everything that Danny had to say, and uh, yeah, he responds to this part saying, "Hey, you don't have to 
only spam Jinx and Aphelios. You can play whatever you want. And if you're trying to learn other champions, um, you know, learning them against the best of the best and other people who are tryharding is great. And if you want to learn some other champions, um, you know, like maybe you're trying to pick up Zeri or, um, I don't know, we've seen a little bit of Ash or a little bit of Misfortune or whatever. Hey, being in Champions Queue is a great way to do that because you're going to get to play against people who are spamming Jinx and Aphelios. And those are the matchups you're going to be playing on stage anyway. Um, and you have a ban. You can ban Jinx or Aphelios if you want. But also one of Doublelift's main points is however good you think you are at Jinx and Aphelios, even if you've already played 100, 200, 300 games, whatever, you can still get better. You are not Guma UC on Jinx or Aphelios or probably any champion. So, um, you know, if on stage you are perma spamming Jinx and Aphelios because those are the best champions right now and that's where you're going to be playing in the playoffs and, and at MSI or at Worlds or whatever, then why would you not be spamming them in Champions Queue? Oh, because you don't want to, because you're bored of them, because you think you're already good enough on them. And this is kind of really Doublest point that he hammers home. And he's honestly like, at some points, being very, very critical of Danny, saying, hey, I don't care if you don't like comms. I don't care if you don't want to play your 10th Jinx game of the night or your 10th Aphelios game of the night. You are a professional League of Legends player. You are, uh, you know, being paid, and in most cases, being paid handsomely, to be as good at League of Legends as you, as you can. You're not being paid to practice in the most fun ways possible or to practice in your favorite ways possible. You are given these tools and given these resources and given this awesome, awesome blessing of Champions Q that no LCS players have ever had before. And, oh, it, you, know, you don't really like voice comms or, oh, you'd like to play in a solo environment or, oh, you don't want to perma-spam Jinx and Aphelios. You know, Doublelift really says that a lot of those excuses are absolute bullshit. Uh, and this is kind of garnering responses from all different kinds of people. You know, you had Papa Smithy coming out and saying, I'm glad that we as a community have successfully turned the discussion around an objectively huge and positive initiative for NA Champions Q into a witch hunt against the players who choose not to immediately drop their practice habits and play it from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, context, Fudge and Danny, again, both guys who, you know, don't play much Champions Q, uh, are two of the best players in their role in North America. We should be learning what they do to become as good as they are so quickly, not demanding that they conform to a new system that is intended to prop other players up to their level. Now, I like the first statement from Papa Smithy. I really hate this second statement. You know, saying Fudge and Danny are two of the best players in NA. So let's try to be more like them. That's really, really bad. Because if you have, you know, a great thing in place like Champions Q, and Papa Smith even says it's a really, really good thing, and they're not using it to the best of their abilities, maybe they could be even better. Just because they're good in the LCS or relative to other NA players or whatever doesn't mean they can't be better and doesn't mean they shouldn't striving to be even better. Like, you know, should players below them look up to them and try to be like them? Yes, but they should also be demanding more and more of themselves and especially people in Papa Smithy's position, you know, a management of a team. He should be demanding more for his players in his region as well. Like, um, it's not like the LCS is performing too well. It's not like we're winning too many international titles or anything. It's not like, hey, we can take the foot off the gas a little bit. He's saying, hey, you, you know, like, what? what's EG just went 9-9 nine and nine in the regular season. It's not like Danny's popping off so hard that he must be having, like, the perfect practice schedule or anything like that. And it's not like Fudge has been that insane of a mid laner this year either. Um, so I didn't really love this, uh, you know, from Papa Smithy. Um, we also had Peter Dunn uh, getting in on the whole thing. He said, um, not this tweet, is this one. He says, you know, because people seem to care about things like this, uh, there are currently 40-plus LCS Academy players currently playing in Champions Q and more waiting for games. Um, you know, this was back in March when a lot of people were talking about how it seemed like Champions Q was dying or dead or whatever. Um, he's been tweeting about this a lot. You know, he followed up. He said, Champions Q update. Eight games are running. Uh, this was 9.30 p.m. 52 of 100 LCS and Academy players were in Q. Um, he's saying there could be as many as 60 to 70 out of play. You know, he's just saying that, hey, Champions Q is still alive. It's still being used really, really well. Um, but then there's been some other people, especially as we've gone on, especially as Academy teams and, and amateur teams have started to get knocked out of their playoffs, especially as LCS teams didn't make playoffs and now um, this coming weekend LCS teams are going to start getting knocked out of the playoffs as well certain players seasons are coming to an end they're kind of getting into offseason mode it seems like Champions Q is dying once again and you know Ole tweeted out hey Champions Q is dead today. Please, where are you guys? Uh, Ole said, hey, Champions Q is com completely dead. Bury it. Um, we had Lorlo um, come out and tweet, please save Champions Q. 
Um, and we actually got a response from uh, Peter Dunn. He may have deleted it because I see that it's not quoted anymore. Um, but Peter Dunn said something along the lines of like, hey, yeah, you know, I don't have a great response for this. Um, you know, it does seem like, you know, no one's really playing Champions Q right now. And it seems like Champions Q is dead. I, I'm not sure why he deleted that tweet. Um, but he did at one point quote um, this tweet from Lorlo and pretty much say, yeah, hey, I don't have a great answer for you guys anymore. He was a, a guy who was really, really standing up for the players and saying, hey, um, you know, they're, everyone is still playing Champions Q when they can. Or I know they have like one day off where they play soccer and stuff like that. But he's like, other than that, you know, the players are still playing Champions Q. They're still using it. Stop this weird witch hunt and all this stuff. But, um, you know, even Peter Dunn has come as far as to say now that, yeah, it's looking more and more like Champions Q is dead, which... Makes sense because, like I said, a lot of players are starting to get into off-season mode, but um, it's just crazy because so many people have been asking for a tool for this like so long, uh, for so long. So many people have used Champions Q this split and said how amazing of a resource it is, but you need everyone to buy in. You can't just have a couple players or a couple teams saying it's so good. It really takes the whole region, and that's kind of an inherent flaw in Champions Q, I think, is that like, yeah, you know, once people start getting knocked out of playoffs or their season start ending or whatever, it's not going to keep sustaining itself and then people are going to get out of those habits they're going to start playing solo queue are they going to come back is it ever going to be as popular all this stuff like champions queue i feel like is on the right track but it's still not there and you still don't have everybody buying in you still don't have have everybody you know um fully committed to it and it's just this really crazy weird ongoing drama and and again yes people are getting witch hunted and all this stuff it's so great but it's also so toxic and bad at the same time um but yeah it's looking more and more like champions queue at least for right now is pretty dead and i think that sucks but i don't know it's pretty much it for this video today guys have me drop a like if you did enjoy i would appreciate that so so much leave a comment down below let me know what you guys think about this whole situation uh do you think champions queue is an awesome resource that everybody should be using do you think it sucks and we should just go back solo queue do you think somewhere in the middle i don't know i'd love to hear your guys thoughts and opinions maybe you have a solution i don't know subscribe tip today and all my latest content i hope to catch you guys in the next one but until then peace